uh, I used to sell DVDs in Hackney Market. Wait, what? How did I not know this? Wait. <laughs> when? Uh, when was this? I was like 10, 11. What? It just gets worse. This is my director's Bismillah, it's Mr. Islah. You are listening to the Director's Cut podcast on the CS Network, where we talk all things ethnic within the entertainment industry. And obviously, this is my first pod, and I wanted to make it special and start a tradition, so every guest gets an intro. Are you ready? I'm ready. Here we go. In a world where laughter was rare, one man sought to challenge it all. His name is Michael Trum. The legend never dies. <laughs> man. What are you saying? Uh-huh. Sick intro. Bun you, Robert. <laughs> Look <laughs> Wait, what you've done. Look what you've done, Robert. But uh, in terms of... Uh, in, uh, you know, I'll give that a four out of five. Yeah, it sounds like a movie, innit? You've got a proper movie name, though. Yeah? Yeah. How so? Michael Trum. Like, it sounds like a movie name. Mind you, I just don't see it like, it's not Abdurrahman. Like, <laughs> 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 he just, he just, just doesn't, doesn't work. It just doesn't roll off. It doesn't roll off the movie name tongue, bro. Bro, welcome to the podcast and you had to bless it first, of course. Uh, just to warm up, what I thought we could do is uh, do three random questions. All right. All right. So you ready, yeah? Yeah, right, yeah. Cool. Question number one. Why are you such a dickhead? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Am I supposed to answer? <laughs> Wait, do you want to answer? <laughs> I just like to see your reaction, bro. You're a waste, man. You're, you're a dickhead. It's, it's not even the I question. Fun this show. It's not even the question. Fun this show. Hey, 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 that's expensive equipment, fam. I'm out. Get back in, bro. Alright, question number one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My head's shaped like a penis. <laughs> question number one. If you could travel back in time at any point without rewriting history, where would you go and why? Just for bands, I guess. I would love to see my mum's face when I was born. Really? Yeah, I just, you know, see if she was happy in it. Like, yes. Had a good, oh, had a good did, son. did she tell you that she was happy when you were born? Well, she did tell me I was 17 hours of labour. Whoa! Because of this fat head, didn't it? Whoa! Yeah, I don't think she was happy, bro. <laughs> <laughs> she was so not happy. I don't want to, I, I don't know, maybe, innit? Maybe. Because she doesn't seem too pleased with me now being an actor and that. So maybe I can go back and and relive a happier time in her life. (laughs) What would you do if you did see her face and it wasn't happy? (laughs) Would you be like, take me back, take me back. (laughs) I'd be like, it's okay, mum. I'll end it for you now. Oh oh my God. Kill myself. (laughs) This is getting dark. And then like the, the 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 future one or the present one me just vanishes it's not flash oh, man the time the timeline in it i told you there's no changes in the timeline it's just a visit <laughs> and spectate you're only spectating you're not changing the timeline oh. anyway if there was a zombie apocalypse Ooh. would you be a good survivor and why 100 percent, bro why i mean regardless the fact that we made a corner shop episode zombie apocalypse mm-hmm. so you know a lot of that was our thoughts going into this about how we would survive one, right? But I am a somewhat skilled fighter, maybe low level. Because you have that ability to fight, hopefully you'd be a little bit more brave in those moments. Mm. And obviously, you know, it might be a little bit difficult to kill somebody that you love who's turned into a zombie. But however, because I have that certain level of no love, <laughs> no love, that ability to fight a little, little bit to, to not be scared, right? Bro, I, feel, I, feel I like think I'm, I could be able to kill you. I feel like I'm talking to a different person right now. <laughs> I, I should have got a different first guess. <laughs> I introduced you as like my best friend. Now you're telling me you'll kill me if I was a zombie. Well, those are questions that I've asked myself. Oh no, wait, would you kill me if I was a zombie? Do you want me to kill you if you were a no. zombie? What would you want me to do? Like, keep leave, you it alive? To, leave it up to someone else? <laughs> like, <laughs> Wouldn't you rather it be me? No, there's no... There's nothing good about that, bro. Okay, so the, so I've, I thought about it, right? So yeah. somebody you love, yeah, i.e. you, yeah. Should I keep you alive in hopes that there's an, you know, a, a antivirus? Yeah, I would prefer an, that answer an if antivirus. I'm honest. But you know, some people would just be like, nah, just kill me straight in it. So I'm ready. If you would like me to kill you, if you're a zombie, I got you. Well, I, I don't know what to say to that. Final question: If you could be any character in a movie and live in that reality who would it be and why oh i would be um doctor strange 
Doctor Strange? Yeah. Really? I just feel he's OP, bro. That's true, because he can like travel through he, different multiverses. Time, he can portal, he, he's got the cape. Oh, yeah, that portal would be so useful. You know what I mean? Get into an audition and just be like... <laughs> <laughs> zoom, zoom. I'm and then, here. And then, you know what I mean? And then like, if I was actually going for the Doctor Strange part, I'd be like, okay, hey, look, cool man, got the abilities. <laughs> and you could use it in kids' parties. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't do that no more. COVID, COVID messed that up. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah man welcome to the podcast and i thought uh let's start off with um how we met so uh, a lot of people don't know this because obviously you know you know we're best friends and stuff but um we actually met online <laughs> yeah like e-harmony no, <laughs> what <laughs> yeah we met on tinder now nah. <laughs> i basically on sh- once, <laughs> once upon a time i tweeted and i said uh there's no british chinese actors out there oh yeah yeah, yeah and then yeah. michael lung tweeted you and brought that mentioned me and then put us together yeah so michael lung shouts he's like a mutual friend between us yeah like i worked with him in jd sports mad in kingston yeah, yeah, yeah. mad but it turns out me and you went to the same uni lived in the same ends but we'd never met never literally and then literally i checked out his stuff and he had like webcam videos <laughs> i still have that camera is it yeah <laughs> yeah he had he had webcam videos on his uh only fans account what and, <laughs> i saw your talent from webcam videos and I thought, nah, this guy is actually quite funny. And then I got you onto Mandem on the Wall. And then. Oh, that... snap, you were like my casting director. Yeah, I was. I was. I was, you know. I just, was. It goes to show sometimes if the video quality is dead, but the yeah. acting's on point, you could get the, the job. It's true. However, you may get cut. Yes. <laughs> I so was... you. <laughs> I'm gonna say I, that. I, yeah. <laughs> I got him on Mandem on the Wall. And then I think the boys cut him for some reason. I wasn't actually in control of that edit. But that's a story that for that. another day. That's a story that I can't tell because I don't know where. And then, about five years later, I hollered at him for Cool Shop. Shop. Yeah. And it was, um, it was such a good message as well. It was like, bro, I know I said we were going to do something. I finally got something. Here's the role. You're going to play a Chinese guy. <laughs> When I called you, that was 2012. 12, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I remember calling you, it was on your lunch break. And then (laughs) I called you and I said, yo, bro, I need you to play a Chinese guy. And you were literally like, oh, you want me to talk like this? Uh, uh, One pound fifty? And I was like, yeah, yeah, that, that. And oh my God, you know what? We're going to talk about Corner Shop later on. And we're going to talk about Tony Chang. But before that, I thought, um, let's talk about something that a lot of people need some knowledge on. And that's the Chinese community on uh the acting front right so obviously let's just start let's just wind it back a bit right Mm. so you always were into acting and you're always into drama and stuff but then your career never actually took you that way until i kind of discovered you and then you started uh you know moving forward in that what was your parents reaction when you told them like i want to be an actor i'm pursuing acting um i never really said said it out right (laughs) wait do they do they know (laughs) I never said it. I don't think they know, guys. Out, out, right. <laughs> uh, I kind of went into like a normal job, yeah. nine, nine to five, yeah. type thing, 40 hours. And um, I was earning, you know, okay money. But yeah. like them times I was like, really raw. Is this the rest of my life? And I really wanted to be that actor. So I started, you know, doing it on the side with you. Yeah. And um, so you were like my side girl. I was, I was your side chick. You were my side chick. Yeah, acting side chick. And um, yeah, I, like even when Corner Shop really started taking off, I never really said anything to my mum about it. I was just like, yeah, I'm still, you know, at Harrods. I'm, I'm yeah. working, nothing, you know. So I guess she just cared if you were still like looking after yourself, innit, financially? Yeah. I mean, even now she's like, when are you going to get a real job? You still get that question? Yeah, 100%. 100%. Obviously, yeah. I'm telling her like, yeah, acting work's a bit of a myth now. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, so yeah, she's like, yeah, that real job is looking real good. <laughs> <laughs> what about your dad? Uh, he's even worse. He's like times two. Like he'll come out of the blue. Like if me and him, like together on our on our ones, yeah, he'll just be like, yeah, son. So like this, you know, when you're gonna stop messing around and get a real job. I think like when when I can come home and say, oh look at this massive paycheck I got, and they're like, oh yeah, and then you know, as time fades, yeah. Um, less and less of those jobs and so so does the excitement uh, so when it's good it's good when it's bad it's bad it's bad yeah and obviously right now it's like a horrific time because of you know the whole quarantine period and mm. like i've literally booked like one role in six months 
mad yeah so it's a bit yeah deep. i mean 2020 is just a write-off bro so what about like uh, the chinese community like do you feel like there's any support for the east asian community nah, in the not uk at all. i think i think it's wrong of me to just straight up say no because there definitely is like um there are a you know a, a phenomenal um list of of you know east asian actors within the uk like mm. i've met a few um and there are like you know facebook groups you know east asian actors in in, yeah. in, in the uk and you know we, we so there is some community support there is some but i i don't know if it's the support i'm looking for i mean maybe that maybe that's not the right way to put it but it's like um you know previously like maybe five five six years ago mm. like i was posting videos um, that I had made on YouTube. I was mm. posting corner shop stuff. And um, most of the responses I got from the East Asians were pretty cutthroat. Like, rah, this is dead. Like, this wow. is shy. Like, and it wasn't, it wasn't even like um, constructive criticism. It was yeah. just straight up like, hey. This is work. It was yeah, just, yeah, yeah, it was just straight up like, hey. And I was just like, rah, okay, cool. What about now? Like, fast forward a good six, seven years. <laughs> I, I think now that I'm more confident in where, where I am in this, in this journey, I feel like I'm a little bit more capable of speaking out about these things what about like your east asian friends are they supportive of your acting career there's a few of them who are like quite involved and quite interested in what i do mm. you know a couple of family members here and there but it's not the whole collective i've never really been the one to be like oh yo you should watch this this is i'm in this i'm in this i'm mm. kind of kind of shy so i don't really share yeah, yeah. the stuff that i do and whatnot so you know it can be on my part as well because i've always felt like um, you know, oh, I'm doing this acting thing. Mm -hmm. Nobody's really gonna care, or um, nobody's really gonna pay much attention. Maybe that comes from a history of you not getting the support in the beginning. So you just kind of think, yeah, what it is what it is. Yeah. And you kind of push yourself. Yeah. How I always view it is the circles, and you got your immediate family, you got your extended family, you got your friends, then you got people that know you or know of you, and then obviously fans and followers, and it. And I always feel like the support comes from the outside first. From the outside circles inwards. Oh yeah, that that yeah, that I I agree with that. That makes yeah. perfect sense. Literally, let's talk about East Asian people in uh, TV and uh, media in the entertainment industry, right? So, do you get offended or do you mind when a non-Chinese actor gets casted as a Chinese character? For example, Ken Jong, who played Mr. Chow, or Randall Park, who played uh, a Chinese father in Fresh Off the Boat. Um, obviously the that's us based but if it was obviously british as well does it bother you in the early days yeah like randall park ken chong they were like the only east asians doing anything mm. right in in the us market um like there were only the very few that i could look up to and be like yeah like yo shouts like i mm. could be like just like them but you know what i i don't i'm not upset about them getting those roles even though then you know they're korean mm. And they were playing like Chinese roles. I'm. It didn't really bother me too much because I was gassed that any East Asians were on TV. Like Randall Park with Fresh Off the Boat. I was like, rah, this is like the series that I've always wanted to come mm. to. You know, my my TV and see like a Chinese family, run of the mill but standard thing. And then so you were just happy to see Chinese faces or yeah, yeah, East yeah. Asian faces exactly, on exactly. TV. Exactly. Yeah, because you know we were underrepresented before. Mm. Um, I think like on East Enders, there's only ever been like one Chinese girl. Mm. And that was like, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, that was a long time ago. Two bro. decades ago. Oh, she was a drug I, dealer as well. <laughs> it wasn't even a great role. I, I'd, I'd be bothered now if it matters to the story. Mm. Like, if you, you know, if he's a Chinese guy and he's speaking Chinese to his family, but you've got like, I don't know, whole Korean guys and you're mm. selling it as Chinese, then it just doesn't add up. And it just mm. feels like, rah, you know, I know like a whole, I can count 10 Chinese people who are like, decent actors like mm. go and get them you know what i mean like if they're if if it matters to the to the character and it matters to the story get the right ethnicity it's like um mulan right mm. get some writers or get somebody who's east asian to actually work the crew fun fact well not fun but un unfun fact unfun fact <laughs> unfun fact <laughs> that sounds like a chinese family name bro unfun fact unfun fact this is unfun a new fact. show unfun fact <laughs> <laughs> new segment in show new segment unfun fact unfun fact uh, the people that made mulan the whole crew no one was chinese everyone was white everyone was white white in the whole film and no no racial i mean i love white people yeah. i got white friends <laughs> <laughs> that makes you know that makes you no racial i got a white friend but literally mulan was made by white people 
Yeah. And uh, even me as a non-Chinese person, I've got Chinese family, but I knew that there was just lack of accuracy in that film. Yeah, man. I mean, it's, it's nice that, you know, all those Chinese people got paid, so. <laughs> but let's talk about that uh, army commercial that you did, right? Ooh. So you flew out to, where was it? Uh, Marrakesh. Marrakesh. You flew out to Marrakesh to shoot a commercial for the army. Um, and then apparently when it came out on national TV, you got cut. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. What going with that? Um, I, I mean, they never really said anything. Yeah. Obviously, in the terms and conditions, they say, oh, you, you know, if you get cut, you still get paid. Yeah. Because you did the job, whatever. Um, I'm thinking national TV. Yeah. Um, if they have a time limit, because obviously during the day, okay. they, they might have a time limit. And they're thinking, yeah. hmm, out of the white guy, the black guy and the Chinese guy, who would be the least important? And this is probably when, you know, COVID was very, very early on. So it was like it was released... Uh, early this year in like Jan yeah. and like COVID was just starting to to really really peak around the world and um, uh, a lot of the racism towards Chinese people are, you know it was definitely picking yeah, up yeah, man. Yeah, and the, I the... felt a lot more of it right and my only assumption obviously this is my assumption, assumption is that yes. yeah, they can be like well you know that's probably not going to get the biggest feedback you know we're not going to get the greatest response from you know a Chinese guy you know are people going to relate to it who's watching national british tv i mean i'm making excuses for them but at the yeah. end of the day man's vex yeah, why not put real. me out of there bruv <laughs> why not put me on screen why can't you keep me in bruv it was like my, my bit was like 10 seconds bruv. that's deep man it's but you still got paid yeah i got paid but <laughs> hey you know it's all good and, <coughs> and you know maybe maybe silver lining mm. is like i'm not really out here trying to get people to sign up for the british army positive stuff came out of it then. yeah my, my, my grandma you know what the, my grandma did see it on like um it's early runs where yeah. i was still in it and she was gassed so yeah so that that made my day shout out to grant yeah <laughs> shout out to grant all right well let's talk about corner shop it's the first welcome time we're probably corner shop. welcome to the corner shop everyone's here waiting to uh, obviously for us to talk about corner shop it's the first time we've got together on screen since corner shop movie let's have a little reminisce session and let's talk about tony chang so the first thing I want to say, right, is I regret creating the character. What? Yeah. What do you, what do you mean, bro? I regret creating. I'll tell you what. I regret creating the character because I feel like I created a monster. <clears throat> no, joking. I feel like I created like a gimmick and a mockery of the Chinese community. And there's a part of me, as much as I love the character and how much fun we had with him, I feel like I, I did something bad. And people just pointing fingers like, ha, 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 look at him. He's just a, you know. What's your thoughts now after six years of Corner Shop of playing the character Tony Chang? Should have paid me more. For <laughs> Apart from of, financial stuff, man. The amount of embarrassment that hey, you put me through. Hey, don't make me look bad on my podcast, bro. <laughs> Come on. Um, no, nah, look, I, I, I'll set you straight because um, you were possibly the biggest part of uh, my acting career and and you know in in terms of like corner shop in terms of tony chang mm. like you set in motion like uh, my career and you you gave me the ability to to do something i was passionate about for years and you were the first person who come out of nowhere and 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 literally supported me like i've never had support from from anyone before like my parents don't support me like that you knew the game and you saw something in me and you gave me a leg up and like I, you know you're giving me a career bro you my career is is yours that's blessed bro right. <laughs> that so i'll set blessed. you straight apart from that um, so i guess tony chang's a bit sentimental to you in that way 100 um, yeah. percent. and tony chang is an extension of me um yeah so uh, once upon a time uh, I used to sell DVDs in Hackney Market. Wait, what? <laughs> what? How did I not know this? Wait. <laughs> when? Uh, when was this? I was like 10, 11. What? It just gets worse. Um, like me and my mom, we were showing DVDs. 10 or 11. Oh my God. We knew a guy. But then, you know, a few a few months later, we got shut down in it. Like police came up in a bully van, shoved me in the back. Good coffee, you know? <laughs> oh my days. Five pounds for two. <laughs> Oh, I, don't even, I don't even know what to say. I'm speechless right now. Tony Chang is real. <laughs> yeah, I mean, don't feel bad, bro. Don't feel bad. <laughs> I don't think I feel guilty anymore. <laughs> yeah, man, Tony's a, an extension of, of, of me. He he is me if, you know, I, you, you, if you turn up the dial to 10. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, Michael. Uh, I guess, you know what? That makes me feel better. Yeah. That makes me feel better. It's man. me, bro. That makes me I feel just better. don't have an accent. 
<laughs> but it was important to Tony's character because because man was a, a fresh off the boat. Came from come, came from China. Well, fresh off the plane. <laughs> fresh off the plane. Yeah. FOP. Came. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what were your highlights of playing Tony Chang the character um, throughout the six years of Corner Shop? I mean, apart from those six excruciating years I spent with you. <laughs> uh, um, do you know what? Uh, beautiful things that I've been able to do through through Tony Chang is um, to create that uh, that laughter, that happiness. And I know it's not, you know, the corner shop is not everybody's cup of tea, but, mm. you know, we tried to make it as, you know, as relatable for, for mm. families as possible, right? And the messages that we got of, um, you know, families getting together for the first time in like five mm. years and sitting down and actually laughing and enjoying each other's company while watching Corner Shop, that's, that's priceless. Something you can never buy, man. Yeah, literally. bro. Like, I mean, sometimes when we got their messages that... Yeah. I would want to cry, man, from from happiness. Like I don't really care about the money. I don't care about the fame. I care that you know we were able to make so many people laugh and and bring families together. Like that's it's mad, isn't it? What Corner Shop has done for kind of makes me want to cry now. <laughs> <laughs> it's mad what Corner Shop's done for kids nowadays. People are coming up to me saying I grew up with Corner Shop, and it's mad to hear that because Will Smith did that for us. Yeah. We're watching Fresh Prince. Yeah. And um, like, it's just crazy to know that Corner Shop and Malik and Tony were part of people's childhood. Yeah, that's, that's, and that for me is that's what crazy. I always take away. That's yeah. insane. It's literally insane. And we did it all on our own. I mean, boy, like one of my life goals is always to, to, to leave behind a legacy, right? A good, a good like portfolio of, of, of work that you mm. could just be like, rah, this guy has gone too soon. Well, just to wrap it up, right? Can you give the people out there listening some advice as Tony Chang with Tony Chang wisdom? What will you say to them? In the spirit of of Tony Chang, because man man does good copy, sells good copies of DVDs. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna steal this one. <laughs> uh, yesterday is history, tomorrow a mystery, mm -hmm. but today is a gift. That's why they call the present. There you go, guys. Tony Chang from the deleted scene of Kung Fu Panda. <laughs> Do good coffee, you know? I took good coffee. And on that note, that's a wrap. Okay, bye. Bro, you could have come up with a better quote, man. Uh, come on, man. Uh, you might have like... Confucius. Moved, nah, nah, we're done now. We're done. Uh, 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 <laughs> Cut, uh, the Cut the mic off. Cut the mic off. Why are you worry about tomorrow? Uh, uh, why are you worry about... It, it doesn't work if you paraphrase it, man. Yes. Don't reword Kung Fu Panda and make it your own quote. Yeah, that was horrible. <laughs>